Do you find it difficult to identify trees or shrubs in the wintertime? Fatality! Well, of course you would! There are no leaves! But, in the wintertime, when the trees or shrubs have lost their leaves, in most cases, the twigs are going to be your best bet for properly identifying a species. So, in this video, I'm going to share with you the basics of twig identification, then walk you through how to properly identify a species using their twigs. But before I do that, be sure to subscribe so you can see more content like this. But now, let's go ahead and look at some sticks. Here is a twig from a magnolia tree, which we're going to use to learn how to distinguish from apical and lateral buds on a twig. In case you aren't familiar with what a magnolia tree looks like, they produce these beautiful pink flowers in the early spring. Apical, or terminal buds, are buds that reside at the end of a twig. On a magnolia twig, the apical buds are large and they are really pubescent. Lateral or auxiliary buds are buds that reside on the sides of twigs. On a magnolia twig, the lateral buds are not as large or as pubescent as the terminal buds. In many tree species, there are significant differences between apical and lateral buds. For instance, here's a picture of a black walnut twig. The apical bud is at the end of the twig, is larger, and is more oblong than the lateral buds. There are three lateral buds on this black walnut twig. They are smaller and more circular than the apical bud. Both lateral and apical buds may contain bud scales. In order to understand bud scales, we will be looking at the twig of a sweet gum tree. Sweet gum trees produce these infamous spike balls every year. But what is a bud scale? Bud scales are modified leaves that surround a bud. And sweet gums have shiny brown bud scales with tiny hairs around the edges. Bud scales can be arranged in different patterns. The first and most common of these patterns is named imbricate. This is when bud scales on a twig overlap each other, like shingles on a roof. An example of imbricate bud scales would be a sugar maple. The next type of bud scaling pattern is a valvate pattern. Instead of the bud scales overlapping each other, like with the imbricate pattern, they meet in the middle. We can see this valvate pattern in red stem dogwood. Lastly, the final bud scale type is a naked bud. These buds have no bud scales present, but they can still be protected by small leaves. An example of a tree species that has a twig with a naked bud would be a pawpaw. Earlier I mentioned pubescent, but what does pubescent mean? It refers to a part of a plant that has tiny hairs or is fuzzy. The apical bud of a magnolia twig is highly pubescent, but sometimes pubescence can be difficult to spot. For instance, the apical bud of a box elder is not super fuzzy, but it still has visible white hairs. This makes a box elder pubescent, just not as pubescent as a magnolia. Another term that is useful to know is glabrous. Glabrous means a part of a plant is smooth and has no hair or fuzz present. An example of glabrous would be the lateral bud of a sycamore twig. There are no hairs present on this twig. A glabrous bud can also be waxy, as seen by the picture of the lateral bud on this willow twig. Both the sycamore and willow have valvate bud scale arrangements, but the bud scales don't meet in the middle. Instead, each bud only has one bud scale that acts like a cap. Now that you know how to identify apical and lateral buds, and are familiar with bud scale arrangements, let's look at nodes and inner nodes. Now, what is a node? A node is where buds attach to the stem. So what about an inner node? An internode is the space between two nodes. Buds can be arranged on the stem of a twig in two common fashions. The first arrangement is opposite. An example of an opposite arrangement is the buds on a box elder twig. The buds on this twig are directly across from each other on the same node. The second common arrangement is called an alternate arrangement. An example of an alternate arrangement would be a redbud tree, which has staggered buds that are not directly across from each other and are on separate nodes. There is a third, less common bud arrangement called world. An example of a world arrangement is the buds on a catalpa tree, which have three or more buds that arise from the same node. Besides types of buds, leaf and bundle scars are important to know. 
This is a twig of a Kentucky coffee tree that will be used to help us identify leaf and bundle scars. The pale bean-shaped area on this twig is the leaf scar. A leaf scar represents a place on the twig where a leaf was attached. Leaf scars can be a few different shapes and sizes, but we aren't going to cover that in this video. Inside of the leaf scar is a bundle scar. This is where the leaf was attached to the plant's vascular tissue. There are four different types of pith that are found in twigs. The first is a continuous, otherwise known as entire pith, that is solid and uniform. Cottonwoods have continuous piths. The next type of pith is diaphragm, which is when the pith is solid, but it has thin horizontal walls inside of it. This type of pith can be found in pawpaw twigs. Now we have a chambered pith, which is hollow, but has thin horizontal walls. This can be found in black walnut twigs. Lastly, we have hollow pits, which are, as you would expect, empty with no horizontal walls. Amur honeysuckles have hollow pits. There are a few common features that aid with twig identification. Lenticels are pores on a twig that allow for gas exchange to occur between the inside of the twig and the outside air. On this sugar maple twig, the lenticels are the small yellowish-white dots. Some species have more prominent lenticels than others, so this can help out a lot when trying to identify a species. Tulip trees are an example of a species that have a pair of stipules that are leaf-like structures and will eventually fall off. When they do, the stipules leave behind a stipule scar. In this case, it is a ring all the way around the twig. These stipule scars, being present or not, can distinguish one species from another. Now, there are some more uncommon identification features that I'd like to mention. Some species of tree have twigs with a distinguishable odor. If you were to scratch a twig from a sassafras tree and sniff it, you would notice that it has a very similar smell to that of Fruit Loop cereal. Bradford pears are an ornamental tree that is one of the first to bloom in the spring here in Missouri. These trees are one of many species of tree that can arm their twigs with thorns to help protect themselves against herbivores. Cottonwood trees, along with several other species of tree, have buds that secrete resin. Resin is an organic substance that is insoluble in water and is secreted by plants. The yellowish-brown resin of the cottonwood twig can be seen here. Burning bushes are green twigs that have distinctive, flat, woody, corky wings or ridges. Okay, now that we've learned some of the basics of twig identification, let's recap what we've learned with a few examples. Here is an unknown twig. The first thing we should do is see whether or not it is opposite or alternate. This twig is alternate. So now we'll want to focus in on the apical and lateral buds. Looking at both of them, the apical bud is a larger version of the lateral bud. If we take a closer look at our apical bud, we can figure out what sort of bud scale arrangement our twig has. The buds on this twig are valvate because there are only two bud scales that meet in the middle. Now let's check out our pith, which appears to be brown and continuous. Lastly, we'll want to take note of any extra traits that may be unique to this species. One trait in particular that is glaring at me is this twig's flat, bright, yellow buds. That trait immediately tells me that this twig belongs to none other than bitter nut hickory. Here is our next unknown twig. Let's see whether or not it is opposite or alternate. This twig is also alternate. So now let's take a look at the apical and lateral buds. Looking at both of them, the apical bud is about the same size as the lateral bud. If we take a closer look at the apical bud, we can see our bud scale arrangement. The buds on this twig are imbricate because they overlap like the shingles on a roof. Now let's check out our pith, which is brown, continuous, and oddly star-shaped. There are only a few species that have a star-shaped pith. Most will have a circular-shaped pith, just like this one. As far as extra traits go, you may notice that there are multiple apical buds, and they are all clustered at the end of the twig. This, in combination with a star-shaped pith, tells me that this is at least an oak tree. Another distinguishing trait this tree has is that its buds are pale and pubescent. This lets me know that this twig belongs to a black oak tree. 
All right, thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed learning about the basics of twig identification with me. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all in my next video.